Welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. Um, today, we will look at the glorious Benin Empire. But first, continue to support us by making sure your subscription and notification buttons are clicked on. Thank you. Now, although linguistically different from um, the Yoruba, the Edo of Benin, which also grew into an empire, are believed to have uh, to be close relatives of the Yoruba. However, the two um, ethnic groups do not agree on how they are related. For a start, the Yoruba believe that Oronyo, son of Odudua, founder of the uh, Yoruba race, was invited to Benin during a period of unrest. If you have watched our episode on Oyo, you will, not, you will uh, note that this son uh, of Odudua, Oromiyo, is believed to have also founded uh, Oyo, now, it is believed that Oronyo went to Benin after being invited. He then settled there after freeing the people from their rulers who were oppress oppressing them. However, the Edo people's oral tradition, while agreeing that Oronyo played a major role in, um, in Benin, they believe that it was from Benin that Odudua went and founded uh, Ife. Please watch our episode on Ife and Oyo to get a clearer picture if you've not already done so. Now, the people of Benin call themselves Edo. According to Edo oral historical version, the land of Benin, which was originally called Igomidodo, had rulers who were called Ugiso. However, the people became disenchanted with uh, these rulers and therefore sent for Oronyo, who the Edo people believed was their prince, since they also believed that Odudua migrated from Benin to, to found the uh, Ife. I don't want to get caught up in this wrangling, which is uh, similar to that of trying to decide which comes first, the chicken or, or the egg. Uh, I continue to look to archaeologists and historians who hopefully will help settle this debate through scientific uh, dating of uh, sites and the artifacts as well as uh, rigorous historical research. Suffice it to say that Oronyo's son, Eweka, is regarded as the first Oba or king of, uh, of Benin. The name Benin came later. It is believed to have come into use during the reign of Oba Eware the Great because the kingdom's administrative center was known as Ubinu or Ibinu. It was this word that evolved into Benin which some sources claim was how the Portuguese pronounced and recorded it. So, the pronunciation was gradually adopted by the indigenous. The history of Benin spans a continuous period of hundreds of years, encompassing the first dynasty of um, Ogisos, and that of the republican uh, rulers. Now, during which uh, 31 kings reigned, according to the historian Egareba, the first started with Igodo and ended with um, Ogiamwe, and the second, um, Oba dynasty, which started from Eweka, the first ended with the Oba of Oranwe. 
Edo kings shared authority with a hereditary order of chiefs of powerful families and town um, and town chiefs of different uh, guilds called the Uzama until around the 13th century when Oba Iwado began to chip away at the power of the chiefs. Royal power became even more consolidated under the famous Oba Iware, who reigned from about 1440. He was a great warrior who expanded the kingdom and was the one who established a hereditary uh, succession uh, to the throne. The Benin Empire extended to Dahomey in the west. Um, the um, Niger Delta in the east, along the West African coast, and to some Yoruba towns. Women wielded power in the empire, especially the Queen Mother. Eware also rebuilt the capital city and fortified it with walls and uh, moats to protect it. The capital city was Benin, as I indicated earlier, which is currently still the capital of Edo State of Nigeria. The Oba of Benin was the supreme political, judicial, economic, and spiritual leader of his people. And uh, he and his ancestors eventually became the object of a uh, state courts. Eware's grandson, Oba Esigi further eroded the power of the Uzama and increased contact and their trade with the um, Europeans, especially with the Portuguese, who provided a new source of um, copper for court art. Later, this um, authority was diminished by the establishment of administrative dignitaries. It is pertinent to note that the Kingdom of Benin prospered due to regional trade with other kingdoms. However, around the, in the 15th and the 16th centuries, Benin began trading with the Portuguese. These Europeans settled at Ugoton from 1487 AD and expressed interest in beads, um, cotton, uh, cotton cloth, ivory, and slaves. While the king of uh, Benin maintained strict control of this trade um, by through a royal monopoly, as he pro prohibited the sale um, or trade of some items. Now, under a succession of strong Obas, Benin became a highly organized state and had some extremely gifted artists and sculptors who, like um, those uh, in Ife, worked in brass, ivory, and wood. These artists and craftsmen were organized, very well organized, into guilds. Bini brass smiths and uh, bronze casters have left their mark in the excellent, excellent, beautiful, naturalistic heads, bas reliefs, and other sculptures which are recognizable all over the world. From the 15th through the 18th century, Bini traded in ivory, gum, palm oil, and pepe with uh, Portuguese and Dutch traders. Traders in Benin, in the Benin Empire, served as middlemen between European traders and other people in, interior, in the interior of West Africa to get these goods and then sell to the Europeans and then buy goods from the Europeans to sell to the um, it, 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 
to the interiors. Now, the European contact with the Benin Kingdom was underpinned by their imperial interest, um, which was a de which was um, fueled by a desire to strip the kingdom of its entire valuables. They never meant any good uh, for, for the empire. This was executed under the pretext of trade and Christianity. Unfortunately, the empire also participated in slave trade. By the 1700s, Benin became embroiled in dynastic disputes and uh, civil wars. However, the empire sustained itself until its capital city was burnt and looted of its artworks by the British in 1897. Um, under what they called the punitive expedition. In um, 1897, the British, who were entrenched in colonial trade and expansion in, in Africa, were determined to wrest the control of any remaining inland trade in the area, which now constitutes um, Nigeria. So one of the obstacles in their way was Oba Ovaranwe Nogbaisi, who was the ruler of Benin at the time. According to T.U. Obinya, in uh, November 1896, the acting British uh, consul made a formal request to England for permission to invade Benin City. There is evidence of the primary motive behind this, uh, 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 this invasion, which was financial, nothing else but financial. And the evidence can be found in a letter written by the, the British consul to the British foreign secretary, which survived. In that letter, he asked for permission to invade Benin and depose the ruler on the 17th of November, 1896. Now, the letter survives in the archive dispatches to the foreign office from the, the Consul General in case anybody wants to, you know, look for it to, um, to ascertain its veracity. They made him, there was no doubt about it that they just wanted to... Um, dispossess the, the king, and then um, loot the kingdom. Now, now the um, comes from the Oba's palace alone, the, the consul expected to find, and I'm continuing to quote from the letter, uh, he expected to find sufficient ivory, which would be found in the king's house to pay the expenses incurred in removing the king from his tool. The British then embarked on a military expedition with soldiers who had their weapons, who hid, uh, the soldiers hid their weapons by dis um, disguising them as luggage. However, some chiefs from another ethnic group, the Ishekiri, you know, who are closely related to the um, Benin, who, who always interacted with them uh, through uh, trade, and whose trade had been had already been cornered by the British, got wind of this ploy to destroy Benin, and then they sent over and went a heads up. This gave the Benin uh, chiefs, led by the Olubosheri, the time to mount a fierce resistance which destroyed the British party during which the consul was killed. It was killed. Now, this gave the British a ready excuse to send an, an army made up of 1,200 Royal Marines, sailors, and Niger Coast Protectorate forces in what they called punitive expedition. Their mandate was to destroy Benin, the capital of the empire. 
after destroying and burning most major buildings of the city, this army of foreign invaders then embarked on massive looting. They cutted off artworks and destroyed monuments. Although the official figures of the artworks cutted off to Europe is only recorded as being about 2,500, it is most likely it was a lot more than this because a lot of the looted um, artworks um, ended up in private hands in Europe because the British colonial officers and their soldiers ended up stealing from their government by not reporting or handing over everything they looted. Now, after this inglorious event, Oba Ovaranwe Nogbaisi was then exiled to Calabar, where he died. What was left of the kingdom was then incorporated into British Nigeria. The descendants of a Benin's a ruling dynasty still occupy the throne in Benin City. Thanks for watching and uh, do continue to support us by telling your contacts about us, uh, sending your questions and comments to our community page and giving us a thumbs up. Also, watch out for our next episode because I'll be talking to Dr. Richard Anderson of Aberdeen University about efforts to return some of the stolen Benin artworks. See you next time.